see what this will look for. And what five wedding? So for the first problem, uh, how many of you had issues with the first problem? <laughs> 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 so, this is the standard problem. You should ask me this time to understand the object itself. No. To take time. So you mean that particular style? Yes. Yeah. But in this chapter, we went over such functions. No? In this uh, the, the summation, uh, the, this is not a norm to. Hmm? Norm to? No. This is not norm to square. Square of the square means that uh, if we are calling norm, it's a square of the summation of square of its element. So, the, uh, if you want like that, it will not end. Yes. But if you see in the slides, we have seen uh, in the strong dual slides, there was one linear programming dual where we discussed how to handle such notations. If we hope that this function is uh, convex, then we can hold a unique solution as a Yeah, we should prove it strongly convex, yes. But you asked first for uniqueness, then for convexity. But that was the thing that's confusing. Because, uh, that, let me just hold on, hold on. Yeah, here you see, we, we handled such uh, functions. We, we never use the explicit form. So, if you use the explicit form, it will be difficult here. But if you handle it like the matrix and vectors, then it will be easy to, to improve. Okay? So, that's one thing to do. That, yeah. Now, what about the uniqueness? Well, we can put yeah, this form. To be, you know, it should be maybe opposite, like convexity should come before the uniqueness. Yeah, yeah that should, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it says, you know, uh, how does that stop you from uh, thinking about convexity? Uh, thinking our time long. <laughs> Which one? No, I mean, because uh, why it's uh, this convexity uh, coming, and so uh, come up with another idea of going from convexity and then the uniqueness. No, it's not like that. If the question comes there, it doesn't mean you cannot use it. Okay. Uh, the idea usually is that you know, when you have a convexity of the problem, uh, then the convexity of the function may be a, a different story. So here you have a convexity of the function, okay, and there are no constraints. So because of that, maybe I, I have written this before that. But actually, if you show that this is a strongly convex problem, sorry, if this function is strongly convex, if the function is strongly convex, then the, the minimum is unique. That's one way. The other way is you can assume by contradiction that let's say x1, x2 are two different minimas, and then we show that it's convex. So consider the line between x1 and x2, lambda x1 plus 1 minus lambda x2, and then you will see something interesting happening. You see that all the points between x1 and x2 they have the same objective function value, which cannot happen. Mm -hmm. Then you can claim that. It should be unique. So either you can do the proof by contradiction or just show that the function is strongly convex. It's strictly convex. Strictly, sorry, not strongly. It's strictly convex. Strictly convex. PD. PD. PD, yeah. PD or strictly convex, which is PD. Uh, then uh, B, uh, C, uh, for B, the idea was this, right? This is a condition for local optimality, which was gradient equals to zero. Are this condition also sufficient? Yes. If the problem is convex, uh, then yes, gradient equals to zero is also sufficient condition. So that was the uh, result here. Okay, gradient equals to zero. We said it, it is sufficient to be. Um, yes, here. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? The function that is one. Okay. Should be the function and then uh, the third derivative equal to zero. Yes, so that is the necessary condition that the first derivative equals to zero. What about that necessary condition is also sufficient? It is also sufficient because of the convex problems. For convex problem, the first derivative equals to zero is also sufficient. So the, the um, function, we, we find the uh, hashing is not the and you ask us, you ask us about this the, is 3D here. Yeah, I'm assuming that it is not. And you, you ask us the uh, if it is sufficient or not. There is not sufficient. 
Jayesh said it's not PSD, then it is not sufficient. It's not from the beginning, since we find it's already there, we, we have to set a sufficient uh, necessary yeah. answer. Yeah, and it is not only PD, it's true for PSD. If the issue is not PSD, then yes, it, it will not be sufficient. <coughs> and then problem C says to solve the necessary condition. So you find the gradient equals to 0 and solve it. And again, if you keep them in the matrix style only, then you can solve it easily. Otherwise, there is no way you can solve it. Okay. So if you write explicitly, then most probably it will be difficult for you to solve it. So, can you give an example of how to get the first representation for this function? What is it? For that, you have to work on it like this. Ax minus b transpose Ax minus b plus lambda, which is this not very really good. So, so the, the thing I think I think for that problem, uh, I think you guys should also learn how to use matrices and vectors. You cannot work all the time explicitly, otherwise uh, you will not be able to work. So you have to look at this. This is the problem, okay? Okay. 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 This is actually the same as this. What is here is here. Also here also it might be difficult if you again write it explicitly. But if you write it implicitly, this is how it is. X transpose A transpose A X okay. minus X transpose a transpose B minus as I get two plus B transpose B plus lambda X transpose X. So this is the function that you should look at. And for this function, the first derivative is this. The first derivative for this is two A transpose A uh, minus two B transpose so like this. Yeah, it should be like this. A transpose B, yes, correct, minus 2 A transpose B. This is constant, B is constant, only X is very less. And from, from here you get plus 2 lambda X. This is the first derivative, the first derivative. And this derivative should equal to 0. So what will happen, and here is an X which I missed. So what will happen is everything, if we take common, it will be A transpose A plus lambda. Because this is matrix, this is a scalar, I cannot just add it. So I need to add here identity matrix, right? Because the matrix scalar I cannot add. So this multiplied by x, everywhere you have 2, it goes away, is equal to A transpose B. Okay? Or, and the assumption is on that if this is invertible, then x can be written as A transpose A plus lambda i inverse a transpose b. And that's why I was saying it's the same as regression. Actually, this is the rich regression problem. So I thought you guys would Google about rich regression and please see how this can be done. And if you write it explicitly, most probably you will not get that, right? It's not to write explicitly. If you write it implicitly, in, in matrix and vector style only, then you can see that, okay? So that was, supposed to be easy, uh, but uh, if you are finding difficulty in handling the matrices vectors and these things, then uh, it's a different difficulty, not the difficulty in the problem, but difficulty in handling such things. Because in the papers, uh, are in, in, in general, that's how the, they try to work on, not on element wise. So then the whole issue is that by yes? Yeah, because you have matrix and a scalar, you cannot yes. just multiply it. So basically you are saying that multiply, uh, uh, in here if you remember, your x transpose x is nothing but x transpose matrix i, right? Mm -hmm. So there is always, there is nothing it means there is matrix i here, identity. So you can always say here that there is a matrix identity that is being like. Okay. So let us 
this type of the first one. Is it true that an optimal solution should exist for the given problem? Mm. Yes. Why? Uh, from from Wistas theorem. Yes. From Wistas yeah. theorem. Yeah. Because the optical function continues. So uh, here I can use the Wistas theorem, and to use Wistas theorem, I need to show those things. Okay. okay. So the optical function is continuous. That's correct. Yes. And the set is uh, not empty. How do we know that? Because um, less than five is uh, sub less than seven. So is it only one feasible point yes. to show it's not empty, or you have to do some system proof? But here you cannot do because it's not linear. Okay. So you have to show it's not empty. Then it is closed. Yes. Bounded. Yes. Also bounded is not. Sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it, not, it may not be obvious. Okay. In this case, because it's just two variables, you can just draw and show that it is in the bound. It's continuous. Uh, for example, First constraint, then you have to find that this constraint is active. Okay, I didn't get the last one. Then, then we have to find that this first constraint is active. No need for that. Uh, and if, for example, if we take the point zero zero mm -hmm. and we plug it in the uh, constraint, uh, the nonlinear constraint. It doesn't matter. You take zero zero at any point. Just it should be feasible. That's it. Active active is not part of. You should just find the strength. That's it. Then it is not empty. Then it is not empty. Yes. Okay. So I should find a point which is feasible for all the cases. And it is a good point that can prove it's not empty. Yes. You can prove by just one one point. Yeah, we are disproving by one point. What you are disproving is it is. Only that it is not empty. Yeah, this is enough because this one point one point one point is enough to show that it is not empty. Okay. Convexity here will play any role. So if we if we prove the convexity of the for the first question is is the solution optimal has nothing to do with convexity. Okay. So it just just by such you know. Okay. So the next. This question is, is the given problem convex? Is it convex? If yes, why? If no, why? Yes, because the objective function is the minimum. Yeah, to show that the problem is convex, we have seen in terms of two directions. The minimizing of convex function subjected to convex axis. And right? we know that the poles are sub-level. Now, uh, now, of course, you have to prove, but please remember, when you have positive square then it should be convex okay it should be convex because if you take h then what will you get two zero zero two yes two zero zero two so we minimize the convex function so how about the constraints because both are uh, sub level so the, the one that is highlighted there is sub level so yes. that's convex the other one is linear, linear. So, yes. so it's convex. So the section of convex axis is also convex. Yes. So it is a convex programming problem. Okay. Yes. Uh, but uh, if we know that uh, the square x one square x two square all both positive, can we just say that this is convex, or we should take PhD, the the Hessian method of this? Uh, that, that's actually the idea. To to whenever you have positive squares. Mm -hmm. It's a convex function. So same argument can be used here. So plus some more positive squares, mm. so it's convex. Yes. Okay. But if not, you just take the Hessian, and the will be able to do zero zero two. Okay. Okay. How about the last one? Does the feasible region of the given problem satisfy any of the constraint qualifications? Uh, yes, since uh, G is small, P is not empty. Okay, but that is generic. But to check, maybe we cannot use generic ones. You have to use some uh, figure. Hmm? You, you can you have the no. sort of Yeah, you can use the okay. Slater's okay conditions. So you know the constant qualification is a general thing, and what it means is uh, G B intersection H B in general is not empty. Okay. Yes. But that is a general concept. You cannot prove that concept for each and every problem. If you want to do that, then you have to spend a good amount of time. Instead, instead, what you can do is you can show that it satisfies one of the constraint qualifications. And what are some of the constraint qualifications that we know? 
I we don't know what we just know two of them, right? Two of them, yes. You know, and status. And here the status yeah. condition can fit. What is the status condition? It says that if you have non-legend and states, first thing is it should be convex. Is it a convex constraint? Yes. Yes. And then for non-legend constraints, the status condition says there should be strict interior point. Can I find a strict interior point for this? Yes. That is feasible. Yeah, okay. Yes. So can you give me an example? Zero zero. Zero zero is strict interior to this and it's also feasible everywhere, right? So there is a strict interior point at six, so that means the, the, the status conditions are satisfied. Okay. So that's it. that was the answer for the first question. So, like okay. select condition only uh, strictly interior point, only one it. So. No. Um, if you have nonlinear constraints, first requirement is the nonlinear constraint should be convex. Okay. <clears throat> Then, for the nonlinear constraint, you should point a strict interior point. This point should be feasible, a feasible point which is strict interior for the nonlinear constraints. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, for example, if we confront with another, say, question. Can you be loud? Uh, I'm saying that if we confront with another question similar to this, and uh, shall we give uh, the examples in order to. to Say that the constraint qualification is subsidized. yes, yes. You have to show what is the strict interior point, okay. or if you can draw, you can draw and show that you guess there is a strict point in the interior. That's it. So for this case, then you can draw it, but in general, you have to show that there is a point. Doctor, yes. if we don't have the nonlinear constraint, we cannot use like the uh, yes. Constraint. Then what will you use? Upper D constraint. That's it. So if you have a linear constraint, just say about the constraint qualification satisfies, and that's it. Okay. For Slater, you have to show strict interior point. To what? Anybody? Uh, hmm? That is partial, but not full. So his question is, what will happen if the constant qualifications are satisfied for the feasible reason? Anybody would like to answer? No, hmm? necessary condition. Necessary it is point. Okay, but the, we'll be close, so this is a better answer than the previous one. But what exactly it means? GB intersect uh, HB is not equal to. Okay, this is the theoretical meaning. But what exactly it means? There's an optimal solution. Sorry? There's an optimal solution for this. No. no. The intersect, the G small b is not empty? No. This is what also he, he said in general. But what it means is if there is a local minimum, it must be KKT. There is no way that you can have a local minimum that is not KKT. So if constant qualification satisfies for this problem, it means all the local minimums should be KKT point. It cannot be the case that you have a local minimum and it is not KKT. Okay? So that's what constant. So if you have a problem where constant qualification doesn't satisfy, if you find all the KKT points, there is no guarantee that you still uh, that there is no guarantee that you found the optimal solution. Okay? So, constant qualification satisfies, it means all the local minima should be KKT. Okay? Please remember this. Okay? And if it's KKT? If what KKT? Okay, so we concluded this local minima is KKT. Yeah, what we can conclude is if there is any local minima, it must be KKT. And KKT give us what is the advantage of to be KKT? So, only. We'll see maybe KKT is the way to characterize. Yeah, you know, okay. But now we knew that it's, uh, it's you know, the content qualification satisfied. So we concluded we found local minimum, then it's KKT. No, no, not like that. What the constant qualification says is, for example, let's say, okay, so this is something you know, one step back. So let's say you have so many feasible points, okay? In this reason you have so many feasible points. Okay. Now what, what are the optimal points? Where are the optimal points? Well, of course all the feasible points will, could be candidate for optimal. Yes. Right? But then I'm saying that there are few points here and there. Okay. The, that uh, let's say are KKD points. Okay. So these are the finite KKD points. So now now I'm thinking just to look at all the infinite points or those KKT points. Mm -hmm. Let us say I looked at those KKT points. 
Okay, and I found the one which has the lowest value. Mm. Can I say that it's a local minimum? It's a global minimum? No. It, these are all the KKD points. Let's say this uh, five, not five. The six points are all the KKD points. Mm. Now my question is, can I say that the, the the lowest of all these is a global minimum? No. 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 Yes. Because the quantum constant quality is not satisfying. Yeah. So if that, that now you have to ask this question, which is whether the constant qualification is satisfied or not. Okay. Constant qualification is it satisfied? Yes or okay. no. If the constant qualifications are satisfied for this feasible region, okay, if it satisfies the constant qualification, then the global optimal is one from the six. Whether the problem is convex or non-convex, it doesn't matter. Okay? But if no, then you might analyze the six and the global optimal could be somewhere here. So what the constant qualification is saying is that if there is a minimum, it must be also k one. Okay? So that is the purpose of of this constant qualification. So, if no, so the, the global uh, might be any not only global. Local minimum could be anywhere. And you, you identified some points which may not be even local minimum. Any, there could be some points which is not KKD but local minimum, and one of them could also be global. So if this is no, then we have no control. Doctor. Is it possible that uh, local minimum but not satisfy for the KKT point? Yes, if, if the constant qualification doesn't satisfy, then yes, it could be local minimum and not KKT. That's the reason why constant qualification is must. It's, necessary, it's, a reason, it's a requirement for necessary conditions. Okay? So if the constant qualification doesn't satisfy, then I can have a local minimum but not KKT point. So, uh, so uh, in general, like, if constant qualification satisfy, mm. Oh, uh, if I found all KKD point, for sure, all minimum is in this point. Yes, for point. sure, global minimum is in one of the points. So, yes, if we analyze all KKD point, we find the optimal uh, the, the value of the global function, and it will give us the global. Yes. Okay. Yes. But if constant qualification is not satisfied, maybe we, we miss some local minimum. We miss minimum. Some, maybe yes. we miss the global also. Yes, and miss the global. Yeah. Yeah, that's the global. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. So, um, my question is the uh, present the problem without talking about KPC. You will find the same point. What do you mean? We are solving, for example, the quadratic problem. Okay. We find, for example, two points. What, how, what, two, what are those two points? How will you find them? The, the minimum, for example, we can, we can prove that the, this function is convex. Okay. Then we can say that we found two points. Okay. So, then, then how about the minimum? How, first, first, what, what do you mean by two points? How do you find those two points? We solve the problem, we solve the problem. Huh? We solve the problem uh, I would say that. We solve it normally, uh, as usual. <laughs> what is that? It's a category. Okay, so you find the minimum of the function? Yes, then okay. you find two points, for example. Well, how did you get two points? For example, I'm saying this to the example. Minimum of the function? Yeah. Okay, of the and the rest, there are two minimums of the function that you found? Okay, and then what? I'm just, let's say, comparing that case with this case, for example. The, the difference is, in your example, you are not mentioning about constraints. It looks yes, like it yeah, is like constraints. Then KKD is the same concept in the constraint. That's the difference. You remember in one of the class, I have spent time just to summarize. So I said that KKD is same as gradient equals to zero. KKD is in the constraints and gradient equals to zero and no constraints. Yeah, this one uh, what I'm coming to because here we are saying that the gradient point, for example, it, it could be, let's say, hidden and we don't know because of the constraints, for example. Yeah. Because, not because, yeah, because of the physical degrees. Yeah, as you mentioned, for any constraint, you can find that point or those points and we know for sure that the, those points that exist, there is no other point. But for the constraints, we are not sure, for example. Yeah, even for a constraint, yeah. Because the constraint, you didn't talk about the um, regularity. regularity. Yes, regularity, yeah. for, cons for a constraint problem, it is not needed. Because see, regularity is coming because of the G B intersection the, uh, HB. Okay. About, about the answer. Yes, because for unconstrained, what is the cone of physical direction? Always everywhere. Mm -hmm. Unconstrained means you can move anywhere. So GB intersection HB, it's not at all, it doesn't exist at all. It is always non-empty. It can always move in any direction. 
That's the reason why we don't talk about constant qualification for unconstrained case. Constraint, you see the name itself. Constraint means it has something to do with constraint. And in unconstrained there are no constraints. So that's the reason. Okay. Uh, the qualification uh, constraint satisfy, uh, we, we say that regardless of the minimization and maximization function? Or yeah, regardless of min or max, anything. This is the has to do with constraints only. Yes. Okay. okay. If so, the, the objective uh, contact and cluster qualification satisfy regardless minimum or maximum function, then we can find the problem. So. Uh, objective is not part of it. Constraint qualification mm -hmm. is for the constraints only. Whether the objective is to min or max is nothing oh, okay, to do. Okay. Only constraint qualification is for the feasible region only. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. For the set. Okay. And the last one, if the intersection is pi, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the, the uh, constraint qualification, yes. That's not satisfied, no? That's not satisfied. That is not satisfied. And if it's not equal, uh, the. Yeah. So it should not be empty, huh? So what it says is when you have okay, a possible potential point, I should be able to move around that point. Yes. Okay. Right, so that was the first uh, question. The okay, part A. Uh, for problem B, uh, part B, for the given problem, are the KKD conditions necessary for local minimum? And usually, this is the statement that is written, but this is what it means. Is it true that every local minimum of the given problem must be KKD point? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the answer is yes, but why? Yes. So that is the answer. Okay. Because the constant qualifications are satisfied, so every local minimum must be KKD. Okay, so there is no way somebody can come up with another point and say this is local minimum. It cannot happen. Okay. So this question is related to the to the past to the one past thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Of course, everything is related, but uh, this is the answer to part B. Doctor, it has nothing to do with the uh, proof that we come up with before. What the, proof? The second order, second order. No, second order. those are the conditions. The, those proofs are the proof for the conditions, why those conditions are valid. Here I am not asking what the conditions are, you know, how to, what are the necessary conditions. I am saying, are the conditions, the KKD conditions, are they necessary for this problem? Yeah, which is the same as the proofs. Um, you said no. No, no, no. The, those proofs are different. Those proofs are saying, for example, if you have a local minimum, then this condition must be satisfied. Or, if your problem is convex and these conditions are satisfied, then you have a global minimum. Things of that, so to, to prove that. Here you are not asking for any proof. He is saying that the conditions, ticket condition, is it necessary for this problem? Okay. And the meaning is here. You have written what is the meaning of that? It means, is it true that every local minimum must be a ticket report? Doctor, uh, in the previous uh, statement, you said that uh, for the local minimum can be not the KKT point. Uh, what is the requirement for that uh, case? With this one, this is the one we highlighted. The requirement is that constant qualifications are not satisfied. Not satisfied. Yeah. If not satisfied, it will not uh, KKT point. So yeah, you can have a local minimum, but it will not be KKT. Okay. okay. If the um, constraints qualification mark has been marked, let's say, you mentioned there, and the question for part B has been uh, asked the same? The answer will be the same. First you check whether the concern qualification is satisfied. If yes, then using that you have to answer. The answer to this is related to concern qualification, whether part A is there or not. So when shall we use the, that, let's say, the first order necessary condition and the second order necessary condition to... It, it depends on the question. The question is asking you to prove yeah. something, then you use. But here it's the question is different. Okay. 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 Now let us look at the next question. Uh, for the given problem, are the KKT conditions sufficient? And then to explain what it means, it would say, is it true that every KKT point must correspond to local or global minimum? Yes, it's true that every KKT point must correspond to local or global option. Why? Why is it true? 
Why the conditions are sufficient? Because the because constraint qualification is satisfied. No, no, the, the, contract. the contract. Because permits it. Okay. So what it means is something like this. For example, let us say I have this six red points. These are three red points. Okay. Now, from this, for sure, if the constraint qualification satisfies, from this, for sure, one of them must be global minimum, right? Yes. This is clear. Now, the part C is a different question. What it says is, all these six points. Should they be local minimum? Sure. True or false? I know one of them is for sure local minimum, right? Yes. But what about the other five? What about the other five? If I have these six critical points, are all of them local or global minimum? If the problem is convex, then yes. If you have five, for, usually for convex problem, you will not have five. You will have only one. Or maybe if you have multiple uh, alternate, then maybe you have infinitely many. But if the problem is convex, then if you get five critical points, all the five will be local, in fact, global minimum. Okay? So that is what part C is saying. Part C is different from part B. You see the difference? Okay? Part B is saying that if you have PKT points, for sure one of them will be local minimum. There is no way you can have a local minimum outside of this. But part C is saying that all the PKT points, what's happening to them? Then they are all going to be local or global minimum. Okay? So what is about the sufficiency? What is about the no, this is uh, just a point. Should be KKT one. This is the only way. Against the FJ. Yes, because FJ, the problem with FJ is you can have so many points that may not be optimal, also part of FJ. Yes. And that would make our search very difficult. Because of the complexity, we cannot say yes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's a difficulty for FJ. And that's why KKT it was a small improvement, but it was the significant improvement. Okay, uh, just for the project director. So, if uh, we have TKT and our proposed contract, and uh, all point is uh, global or sum? No, all of them. If you have one of them. convex problem, all the TKT points are global minimum. Okay, so here uh, instead of say that uh, correspond to local or global minimum, we can say it correspond to global minimum. So yeah, but usually in, in the questions, it is written like that. Okay? Yeah. But what do you say this Yes. Because I'm writing uh, not including local. Okay. Yeah, but uh, that's correct. Okay? If the problem is convex, then you are not global. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now we are in part D. I draw the feasible region and the contours of the objective function. On the drawing, find the optimal solution. So this is more graphical and I think uh, some of you did this. Um, but the idea is simple, so of course I cannot draw you know, uh, that neatly here. Uh, so it The idea was something like this. Uh, let us uh, okay. Actually, it was supposed to be. Uh, Center is zero zero. Let's just use this one. Ah. Okay. So something. Send them. Right? Let's assume. Okay. Let's and then I have another constraint. Line.
something like this, which is 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 6. So uh, if this is x2 plus this is x2, then it should be 2. And for x2, it's something like this. Yes. And really, this is the area. So this is really the area that we were looking at. It's a 5-5, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, 5-5. right? 5-5. Over here is the center, right? So this is difficult, but if you when you draw this, let me use a different color. Uh, let's use this red color. So the center, let's say, is here, 5-5. Okay. So when you draw this, you will get contours. 5-5, uh, it's uh, higher. Somewhere here. No, no. Five, uh, our circle. First circle, oh. it's it intersect on 5 and 5, x5 and y, uh, x15, x25. So it's uh, exactly. the, the center of this circle. Where was the center of this circle? Uh, five, five, five. Five. Yes, five. five. Yes. And this is on the boundary of this, right? Yes. That's the this the the R. The, the, the yes. So imagine it uh, square. Hmm? So this is uh, five. This is five. Yes. And this is uh, five five. So oh, okay. This here. Okay. But the counter should be something like this. Yes, right? uh, the counter is like that. The counter is written, this is 5 5. So the counter will be something like this. Okay. So, of course, you, know, you guys yeah. have programmed it so using some software, right? Yes. Or using the protractor, some yeah, compass. And then you will be able to see that. Okay. Yes. Okay. You will be able to see that it is going to touch on this line, right? So. So uh, approximately you can find where that point is, approximately if the drawing is correct, okay? And that should be enough for the answer for that question. Okay? So that should be enough for the answer for this question, which is draw the feasible region and the contours on the drawing point of optimal solution. Because for nonlinear, usually it is approximate, not like linear programming, you cannot get the precise value. Right. And then part E on the above drawing, draw the open cones of improving and feasible directions. Okay. Open cone of improving and feasible directions. This one is, is uh, interesting. Okay. So let's say this is the point. Okay. This is the point. Yes. So at this point, where is the cone of improving direction? Well, the cone should be perpendicular, you should have this base, okay. That is perpendicular to the contour, right? And then it is going perpendicular. In this direction, this is the gradient. Yes. Gradient is always in the increasing direction, okay? And where are the improving directions? Well, all these directions are going to the center of the improving, right? Yes. Except the perpendicular line. The perpendicular yes. line should be out, right? It's yes. not included. Yes. That's the open cone. Yes. Okay? The drawing is not that very perfect, but you can see. Yes. So this is the cone of the field. The visible region is the one on the left part. Yes, that's why we, we have a zero, uh, empty intersection. This is the cone of improving directions. Okay. Um, improving, yes. Improving yes. directions, not the cone of improving directions. Now let us draw the cone of feasible directions. Okay, I'm going to use green color. Uh, uh, red, maybe. Uh, yeah. Green. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So at this point, where are the improving direction, feasible directions? Well, the feasible directions are exactly from this constraint. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, 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 the gradient of this constraint is perpendicular to this line. Okay. Yes. And then all these directions are feasible. Yes. And you can see that the intersection is. Zero. Yes. Okay. You can see that. Of course, it looks very much 
yeah, yeah. but uh, when you draw that, it shows that the cone of improving and feasible direction is M. Because if we move in the in the if you move line. anywhere in the feasible region, you will increase the function value. Yes, yes. Uh, for the the hyperplane that is perpendicular to to the um, contour, shall we um, uh, draw it again, or let's just focus on that one, the, the, the hyperplane. That for the linear constraint, the constraint itself is going to be the, 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 the plane from which the, the gradient will be per perpendicular. Okay? Whereas for the contours of the objective function, uh, it will be the tangent to that. So at that point, where the tangent is? So for the uh, <laughs> Go of feasible direction and the improving direction. Shall we highlight the uh, all the the region that the uh, should create and follow, or just by the same making just a cone? You just make a cone is okay enough. Okay, just make a cone is enough. Uh, Doctor, yes, I'm interesting about the 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 direction that maintain the function. Not not in, not increased, not not minimized. Is it include also in no. the no? Because we're saying open code. Open code means okay. even the function value is the same, it is not included. It's okay. not included. Okay. 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 So that is one thing to remember. Okay, it's always open code. For the function, we need strict improvement. Okay. Okay. Doctor, for the cone of uh, visible area and the cone of uh, improving direction is visible di direction and improving direction is same. The, the, the direction no. or different? No, no. The, the green ones are feasible directions and the, uh, the, the, blue? the blue ones are improving. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I can Green one? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I'm, not really, hmm? I'm not, not really clear with the the color for, for that thing. So yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, um, this is something. Uh, <laughs> Or maybe you can draw here, Doctor, in the place. Okay. In the port. In the maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You bring it. Oh, yeah. I just want to have a copy for my reference. Yes, yes. See. Uh, just to make it clear. So. so, these are the contours, right? Yes. These are the contours. Yes. And uh, this was a function. Uh, sorry, this was a constraint. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, really, the angles matter, but for the feasible directions, if this is a constraint, let's say this is a point, so here is the point. Yeah, point. Then here is a gradient. This is a gradient of constraint, okay? And all these directions, okay, all these directions are feasible see, directions. Okay? Including the including this line, including this uh, these ones. Okay? Yes. All these are feasible. Including the perpendicular. But in the question it says the open cone, if I'm not mistaken. And the question it says the open cone of improving. Yes, open cone, right? Open cone oh, of good. improving and visible. Oh, yes. So good. then you don't have to include them, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For particular words. Okay. But again, if it is not open cone, you can include them. Now for the other case. Does an include which part, doctor, for the open cone? Perpendicular. Perpendicular in. In which in which line? In no, 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 line. these ones. These yes. Ones. If, if it's open core, it means these lines are not included. Okay. If it is closed core, it means these lines are included. Yes. Now for the for the feasible region, you can include or not include depending on whether the constraints are uh, you know convex or not. Okay. For mm -hmm. linear constraint, you can always include it. Now for the objective function, depending on again it's depending on the angle, you draw the tangent at that point, okay? And maybe when you draw it, you will see that the tangent has a special, it's kind of like pilot maybe, okay? And then for that, okay, for that tangent, this is the gradient of the objective function. Yeah. Why? Because gradient is always taking you out or, or it's just kind of uh, uh, increasing the objective function value. And then all these are the improving directions. Not including the perpendicular because it's open, yes. Okay. So that's why the intersection of these two will be empty. Okay. So that, that is the picture. Doctor, do we need to uh, 
uh, draw for the gradient of objective function and gradient of constraint? How will you draw the curve without the gradients? Uh, by the perpendicular for from from each of them. No, perpendicular from what? Perpendicular from what? Uh, you need gradient to know the curve. Gradient is the basis to know the curve. Yes. Without the gradient, how can you draw the curve? No. The curve is dependent on the gradient. Maybe you you don't have to draw, but you should know where the gradient is. Okay? So gradient is important. Okay. And uh, the tangent of the contour, it, uh, it's uh, will, uh, similar with the uh, line constraint. Uh, because it should, you know, yeah, it's it like should a, it's need not be uh, uh, well. It, I mean, uh, to be frank, I don't have the actual picture. This is just you know, drawing, but I think it should be. Yeah, it should I be the case. The it should be the case, right? Yes, the software and it's. Uh, this should be, it should be the case, right? Yeah, it should be the case. Okay. Otherwise, if there are different uh, angles, there is for sure intersection. Yes. yes. And then we'll find a better point. Okay. Yes. So this is graphical, but. There should be parallel. Yeah, parallel. Okay, that was part E. So part F, from the above drawing which concerns are active at optimality. Okay, here the water the concerns are active at optimality, only the yeah. linear concerns. Okay? Yes. So the, 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 the graphic exercise was just to understand the problem. So that you see how different things are connected or related. Okay. Now using the noise of active constraints, find a kicking point. Now from here, actually this thing starts. So here I know that the second constraint is active, right? So if the second constraint is active, how do, how do you write the KKT condition? Well, we'll say that the gradient of the first objective function, yes. by the way, the problem is in standard form, right? I don't yes. have to do anything. If not, my first step should be to convert it to standard form. Yes. Okay? So now the KKT conditions, you look something like this, okay, uh, 2x1 minus 10, can you, can you read this? Uh, yes. yes. Now, Plus. which constraint will you use? Well, I got second. a hint that only the second is the okay. active one. So, so you that's do. it. So, I'll say u2. Yes. 3, 1. 3, 1. Equal to zero. Equals to zero. Okay. And I need to solve this. Yes. Uh, and I have three variables and two constraints. It means I need more. So I have some more constraints. What are this? U2 should be greater than or equal to zero, zero. right? U2 greater than or equal to zero. Also, I have 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 6. Uh, minus 6. Well, it should be actually equal to 6. Yes, so be active. 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 Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, that's it. And of course, the point should be feasible. We'll see maybe later. But these are the constraints that I need to look at. Yes. Okay. So let us see from here. From the f from the first line, you can see that two x one is equal to minus three u two plus ten. Right. From this, I can boil down to this condition, which is what two x one equals to minus three u two plus ten. Similarly, two x two will be equal to u2 plus 10. 10. Yes. I can plug yes. these values here, uh -huh. right? So it will be like this 3 over minus 3 u2 plus 10 divided by 2 plus u2, sorry, minus u2, right? Actually minus. Minus u2 plus 10 divided by 2 is equal to 6. And now I can solve for u2. And if I solve for u2, I get some answer. Do, do we have an answer? 2.8. Okay. So u2 is 2.8. So this is greater than or equal to 0. Yes. So that's good. Using this 2.8, I can get the values of x1, x2. So. What should be that? Uh, x1.8. Sorry? x1.8. 0. 0.8? Yes. x2, 3.6. 3.6. Okay. And these two points for sure are feasible to this. Yes. How about to this? To the first, I cannot see the here, the first constraint. Uh, is it also feasible to the yes. first constraint? Uh, put all the yes. It is, huh? Yes. That means this is the KKT point. So yes. because it satisfies the primary constraints, the dual constraint is satisfied, 
the dairy condition is satisfied. What about the complementary slugness? We took care of it from the beginning, right? Then we identified only the active cancer. So it means the, the, the complementary slugness is by default satisfied. Because U1 is 0. So that's it. So that is the key point. point. And, and roughly, uh, this point should be the one that should be here. Yes, yes. If you identify the point, if you are grown using program for sure, you will get precise. But if you are doing it manually using the compass and protectors, then you will find approximately the point which is close to this point. Okay. Is crucial asks it to find it geographically and geographically? No, no, this KKD point, this is analytical. But in one of the previous questions, you found it graphical. Okay? The is on this X1 and X2 as a KKT because you plug it in again to the constraint number one and what is. No, 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 not, not just like that. To be a KKT point, it should satisfy these conditions. Please remember, okay? It should satisfy the gradient condition, okay? The complementary slackness, the primal feasibility, the dual feasibility. All these points should, all these conditions should be satisfied by x, x1, x2, u1, u2. So I checked for all of this and I found that all of these are satisfied by this point. And then I know that it's a KPD point. Complementary slackness, primal feasibility, dual feasibility. Yes. All right. The question number G: Find the direction of the steepest descent at point uh, four by five, eighteen over five. Okay. I think this point is same as the point that we got, right? Yes. Yes. So, what is the steepest descent direction? Well, it is this direction. The direction opposite to the gradient. Okay? So ascent or descent direction has to do with the objective function. So if this is the gradient, minus of the gradient. If you remember in one of the proof we said the steepest descent is minus of the gradient. So the minus of the gradient is the steep, steepest descent direction. So it says find the steepest descent direction at this point. So calculate the gradient of the objective function at that point. What will be that? What will be the gradient of the objective function at that point? 2x1 minus 10 and 2x2 minus 10. That is the gradient in general, right? Uh, yes, then we plug in the x1 and x2. So yes, so 2x1 minus 10 and 2x2 minus 10. Then you plug the values of x1, x2. Yes. What will you get? Uh, minus 8.4 and minus 2.8. So gradient of the objective function at this point A will be, go ahead. Minus 8.4 Minus 8.4 And minus 2.8 Minus 2.8 8. 8 Okay So this is the eight. gradient And minus of the gradient is the steepest direction Okay, steepest descent So minus of this will be uh, 8 here and 2 So something like this And that will be the direction Okay mm -hmm. Oh So my, this is the gradient, right? Minus 8.4 and minus 2.8 And mm -hmm. then the steepest let me make a different color. Okay. Then this direction, where you go 8 units in the first axis and 2.8 in the second axis, and this is the direction which is opposite of this. Okay, it's, it's supposed to be opposite of this. Maybe the hand drawing is not. But that is the steepest direction. Which is the direction of the improvement. Yeah, that's the steepest descent direction. This is not the only direction of improvement. No. All these directions are improvement directions, right? All these black directions are for improvement. But this is the steepest descent, the steepest improving direction. Doctor, if the question only asks uh, what is the steepest descent direction, uh, we only need to minus gradient can be the answer like that or yeah, should be the minus of the gradient, just say eight point four and two point eight. It's enough. For, for yes, that, that is enough. Without, okay, without I'm, I'm not drawing just to show that how it looks, but this is enough. Just okay. saying 8.4 and 2.8 is the steepest. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 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 Is there any uh, special notation for the symbol? symbol? No, just minus of the gradient. That's it. Define the open cone of feasible direction at point. A, that is GB. 
So this here you are talking about the condition, okay? The condition for open cone. So the the open cone. Take me one side. The, yes, in, in the on the board, yes, the green one. Yes, that's correct. So how to draw this open cone? Well, uh, oh, sorry, so to draw you have seen that, okay? But how to write the open cone? Well, the open cone is this, right? H. No, sorry, not H. Okay. G, G, right? Yes, G. G. G2. Yeah. So, uh, gradient of G2. G2 okay. transpose D. Yes. Okay. The dot product should be more less, less than, than zero. Less than zero. Less than zero. Strictly less than yes, zero. Yes, okay. okay. This is the open cone. Now, you know what is the gradient? The gradient was how much? 3 and 1. Hmm? 3 and 1. From the proof. Yeah. 3 and 1. 1. And this is D1, D2. D1, D2. Strictly less than 0. Okay. Or you can say 3D1 plus, plus D2 strictly less than 0. Okay. This is an open cone of feasible direction. So you are taking the gradients of H. No, no. That was a mistake. There is no equality constraint. All of these are inequalities, right? No, I mean 3 and 1. It is gradient of H. Why? What do you mean H? For H. the quality for the linear constraint. H is not linear constraint. H is are equality constraints. We say inequality and equality. Yeah. So for inequality constraint, this is the notation G. Yes. Ah, okay. We, we change the indentation. Huh? No, no. This was the actual notation. This no, no, no. Yeah. If we have equal, equal sign. Then we use I mean, H. When we discuss during the class, during the, mm -hmm. class, the H is linear and G is not linear. No, no, no. That is wrong. No. G is inequality in constraint. Yes. H are equality constraints. Yes. Okay. Plus one. So that is GB. Now the question is: Is FB intersection GB FG at A? So for that we need to also write FB. So this is GB, G open B. What about FB? Well, for FB we have this uh, uh, condition. What was the condition for FB? FB condition is the gradient of the hmm, objective function transpose D. So what do you want uh, the cone of improving directions to be? You want the cone of improving directions to have the angle more than 90 degrees or dot product will be strictly less than zero. zero. Yes. Now, if you take the gradient, we, we found something, right? Minus 8 point something. Yes, and minus 8. Seven. So, if you write that, it will be like this <coughs> minus 8.4. No, the first one yes, is T1. 8. 8. 4, T1 okay. minus 2.8. 2.8. G2. T2, yes. Yeah. Less than or it says 8.4 D1 plus 2.8. 8d2 strictly greater than zero. Okay, so now we have to show that these two together are not feasible. You can easily show them, okay, because it's d1, d2. You can draw the picture, a graph. Without using graph, hmm? without graph. In the, the question says yes. without graph. Yes, you can also show because it's a linear system. Uh -huh. Okay, linear system. We can solve it and then show that it is feasible. Okay. Uh, can we use contradiction? Hmm? Can we use contradiction? So such that uh, if contradiction, we, can, we, may, we assume that there is an uh, intersection. So there's a point that uh, this point equal to this equation and this equation, and then we prove that this is possible. But you, because this is a linear system, things are easy. If, it, if it's a linear system, you can create the system too for this. Yes. Uh, and I think this this is, this inequality is clearly fitting uh, that uh, Gordon's theorem. Okay. If you remember Gordon's theorem. It is in this style, okay? so you can create immediately system two. Okay, so we are saying system two. Can we say that if the function and its constraints are complex, then for sure there is no say no, no, it has nothing to do with the function. This is only linear, right? So to show that this is empty, maybe just uh, okay. Let me just open the board and see room just to highlight. Yes. Change the, 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 
the, the three rooms were in, in which chapel? It was in convex functions, right? In this one. Uh, no. You know the convex functions? The, the Sarkas Lemma. Which chapel? Sarkas Lemma is in the convex function. Uh, in the second no, no, no. In the convex sets. Sets. The convex sets, sets, right? Yes. The convex sets. Yeah. So that's the first one. So here we have this circus. Uh, uh, not for yeah, this After is Gordon. Yes. So if you see the system one of Gordon theorem, it is something similar to what we have here. Okay. Strict inequality. Uh -huh. So if you want to show that this system A is strictly less than zero is infeasible, they create this system and immediately you see that uh -huh. it is feasible. Okay. But in terms of direction here or what? Yeah, here the variable is D. Okay, yes. So you saw that there is no D that satisfies both of them. Simply so, there is no intersection between JB and that. Yes. So showing that the system 2 has a solution means that the first system, first system has no solution. Solution. no solution or invisible or yes. no point. So. Yes. Doctor, uh, yes. the circle 1 is system 2? No. no. We have to build system two. No, no, These are the two conditions that I would like to show that they together are invisible. Yes. So it means both of them is a uh, system one. Yes. We want to build system two. Yes. 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 Okay. Both of them together are system one and you build corresponding system two. And this setting is very close to God and zero. Okay? But if in general, uh, uh, typically, th this is the case. In general, this is very close to God and uh, system. System one, system one. Okay. This is usually the case. God is. That, that's why you see among the Farkas Lemma, after Farkas Lemma, the, among so many other similar theorems, only Gordon's theorem is mentioned in this slide. Because apart from Farkas Lemma, Gordon's theorem, Gordon's system will come a lot. Okay. So they are all in the same way. The Farkas Lemma, you can change things and you will get to Gordon's theorem. And from Gordon's, you can change things and it will become Farkas Lemma. But this shape itself. This shape, remember x is circular and zero. Uh, this specific shape, it comes a lot, frequently, oh. and that's why Gordon theorem is also popular. Although they are one and the same, but different shapes sometimes might give you easy analysis. Uh, doctor, for the difference between the uh, Farkas lemma and Gordon, uh, how can we differ to apply uh, in the problem? I mean, when we uh, we need to match uh, the problem with the not you have to convert the, 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 the given problem to, to one of the systems or from one of the uh, uh, theorems. Okay? Which one is easy? By yeah. default, Farkas is fine, but for such cases, for the cones, usually Gordon theorems is directly applicable. Okay. Okay? For whenever, let's say if you have strict inequalities, all of them, then Gordon theorem is straightforward applicable. Otherwise, you can, can modify your system to one of the uh, which one? Uh, one for Farkas systems, okay? So that will be the answer for uh, set, you know, part num number I. I think we need the online session. Okay. No, but you guys are asking questions from the chapter concepts. So yeah. I was expecting that we just go with this, but you guys have questions on the, in the chapter level. So we cannot revise everything in one hour, no? That's very helpful. Yeah, it's increased my our understanding and it's very no, time wise that's the reason why